welcome. I'm Ryan Lynch. And I'm Nolan Murphy. It's good to be here today. 429 is a new show that highlights specific HHS events, student interests, opinions, and challenges. Today's episode segments including teacher interviews with Justina Bushko, our club of Ryan Lynch, teacher interviews of Anthony Bagano, percussion with Nolan Murphy, environmental club of Anna Clark, and arts radio club with Monica Valley. Sounds like a good show. We'll also have an update on this season's achievements of the HHS sports teams. Let's take a look at the interview that Justina Bushko and Jenna Adair had with Mr. White, Holliston's esteemed history teacher. Hi, I'm Jenna Adair, and I'll be interviewing Mr. White for our teacher profiling. How are you today, Mr. White? Very good, thank you. All right, let's get started. Why did you decide to teach history? I decided to teach history because I always loved history, thanks to my parents dragging me through every old home that ever existed in the East Coast. And when I was in my politics class, which is what I originally thought I was going to do, I found myself with a dilemma whether I wanted to be a person who would make a maybe despicable person pleasant to people or do a nobler path. And well, I decided the nobler path. Uh, what did you like about Holliston? Why did you decide to start teaching here? You had cows. <laughs> when I came to Holliston, I had actually been working in Wellesley as a special ed aide, and a teacher who was married to the head of the, social, uh, the uh, special ed department here in Holliston had rec informed me there was an opening. And when I came here, I noticed there were cows across the street in the Finn farm. And when I came into the building, I was early, and I, the woman, the secretary, said to me, you can go ahead and just check out the building. And I wandered around, and two kids held the door open for me. That had never happened to me before in any school system. So I decided this must be the place to be. That's and I, so and nice. I like cows. And he likes cows. Um, tell us about yourself in high school. <laughs> uh, I was good in history. I was good in English. Loved Shakespeare. I, what's the word they used to say, the old, precocious. I was a precocious child and slightly undisciplined, almost completely unfocused, and had a great time. That was my life in high school. That's awesome. Um, did Not you by ever? My parents' standards, no. <laughs> did you ever think you would be a teacher? In high school? No. Absolutely not. I don't know what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a veterinarian in high school. But then I couldn't do the chemistry grade, so that wasn't going to happen. So then, like I said, then no. I didn't know I was going to be a teacher. And as I told my students, there are plenty of people now who are still stunned that I'm a teacher <laughs> because of my lack of patience in real life. Um, what do you do when you're not teaching? Obey my wife. <laughs> you laugh. That's really what the <laughs> truth is. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I mountain bike. I work in my backyard around my pond. I watch football. And I'm back to the original. I obey my wife. <laughs> okay. Um, if you could have dinner with anyone alive or dead, who would it be? Ooh. Well, let's see. First, Washington. I mean, George Washington's awesome. I'd love to sit and talk with him. Then Abraham Lincoln. That would be cool to talk to him. And my wife's not going to hear this, is she? Kim Kardashian. I think the answer for that one is pretty self-explanatory. All right, moving on. Are you a cat person or a dog person? I'm a dog person, but my wife is a cat person, so <laughs> there's the answer. We have no dogs. We have two cats. So you're a cat person? By default. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's all the questions we have for you today, Mr. White. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for having us. Thank you for coming over. <laughs> hey, that was a great interview. Thanks, Jenna. We are conducting a series of interviews over the next few months with various club leaders. This first one is Anna Clark and the president of the Environmental Club. Let's see how our first interview turned out. Hi, I'm Anna Clark, and I'm here with... Ariana O'Malley. And she is the president of the Halston High School Environmental Club. So what does the Environmental Club do? 
So we meet every other Wednesday, and we usually sign up shifts and stuff on how we're gonna recycle around the school. And then during the year, we do a couple major fundraisers. Yeah, pretty cool. So what are some of the goals of the club? Uh, some of our goals are just to create awareness and educate people on how we can better our environment. Yeah, and as the president, do you wanna bring anything like new to the club? Definitely. Um, we always are looking for new fundraisers. There's this new one uh, where we'll do like home energy assessments. And for each person that agrees to one, we get $10, which we can use towards another project. So not only is that fundraiser helping towards one of our goals, but the money we're getting in will go towards another. So it's like, you know, two things at once. It's great. Do you have any idea yet of the goal yet that you're raising the money for or not really? Uh, we're possibly looking... Uh, to purchase a, it's a refillable uh, water bottle station. It's, uh, we're not completely sure yet if we're gonna get it, but uh, it's definitely what we're looking for right now. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. So last year, you guys went to the Nahant Research Center. Yeah. So do you think hands-on experience is very important for the people in the club? 100%. Um, I would say hands-on experience is the number one thing we do. We recycle, everything we do is basically with our hands. Yeah, so. Environmental awareness, very yeah. important for our school. Right, and um, also at every meeting we have snacks and stuff, so we always look for new members. It's, it's a fun time. So it's not just focusing on the environment, it's very social as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, cool. So I'm Anna Clark, and this was Ariana Melly, and back to you in the studio. What a great way to get involved with the school. Now let's take some time to catch up on how the Holliston sports team have done this season. With a 16-47 win over Medfield, the girls' cross-country team ended their season having won their last five meets in a row, eight of their last nine, dating back to last year, and their last six home meets overall. Overall, the team was 21-11 and 11 in regular season meets. For first for Halston was Katie Sally with a time of 18 minutes and four seconds for the three-mile. The girls' field hockey team finished up their year with five wins, nine losses, and four ties. The team is headed by captains Maggie Hamery and Emily Shaney. The Holliston girls field hockey team has been gradually improving over the years due to the changes implicated by the hardworking members of the team. Keep up the good work, girls. The golf team had a record of 99 and qualified for states for the first time in two years. Sophomore Tommy Downing ranked as eighth best average in the league. Junior Mike Anise and sophomore Trevor Pennybacker ranked in the top 20. The team was captained by seniors Derek Bedard and Bradley Arvantes. Volleyball. The team has a record of 4 and 14. Senior captains Bailey DuPont, Heather Wedger, and Maddie Hammond led the team through their difficult season. Their coach, Brian Gerald, was inducted into the Mass Girls Volleyball Association's Hall of Fame on October 16th. The Austin Panthers football team secured the number one seed and went on to defeat Wakona High School in the Super Bowl on December 6th. Winning with a score of 43-0, Nick Athey injured his ankle previous to the Super Bowl, but managed to tough it out and perform at his best. Zach Elginson had a big day as well, with receptions adding up to 212 yards and scoring the first three touchdowns of the game. Congratulations to our Division IV state champs. Go Panthers. Next up, we have teacher interviews with Anthony Pagano and Miss Bodmer. Let's check it out. Thanks, Tom. I'm Anthony Pagano, and this is Miss Bodmer. So, Miss Bodmer, why did you start teaching chemistry? Because it's absolutely the most fun subject to teach. Really? Yeah. Like, what's your favorite part about it? Well, you know, you've been in my AP class. What's my favorite yeah, chapter? True. Uh, I really like thermodynamics. No, what's my favorite chapter? Oh, your chapter? favorite chapter. I remember it was chapter 15, but I don't remember which no, chapter No, every was. chapter, what do I say? Oh, every chapter is your favorite chapter. Right. Okay. <laughs> so what do you like about Holliston? Everything. Everything? <laughs> Nothing specific? <laughs> no, I absolutely love this community. The kids, obviously, are my favorite. You guys, students. Mm -hmm. um, but your parents have been phenomenally supportive of everything we've done, including taking a bunch of kids to Peru. Um, you're easy to teach. You're, you're just nice people. Thanks. Uh, what did you do, or what were you like in high school? Sorry. All right, so this might sound surprising because I've changed a lot. I never spoke, 
And when I mean never spoke, I mean never spoke. Spoke. I was so painfully, incredibly shy. It was unbelievable. It took me many, many years to be so outspoken and such a loud mouth. But I never spoke. Never. Why did you start teaching? So, another interesting question. I, um, after my first marriage ended, I decided I needed to have a career so that I could always support myself. I didn't ever want to be dependent, not just on a husband, just on another human being. I wanted to have my own career. So I decided I'd give teaching a try. And I actually wasn't sure at all that I'd want to do it. But the moment, I remember the first day of my student teaching and the moment I was in a classroom with teenagers, I knew it was the right fit. I loved it. That's cool. So what do you do in your free time when you're not teaching? What do you think I do? Uh, you're really into psychic stuff, right? Yeah, I'm really into okay. the psychic stuff. That's right. I love the whole, I'm a spiritualist, so I, I believe in uh, past lives and reincarnation. But actually, my hobby is to write novels. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, if you could eat dinner with any person alive or dead, who would it be? I'd, I'd want a lot of people at that table. Um, but I'd, I'd have to go right now with Einstein. Einstein? Yeah. As well, that's Ein how I Einstein? say it. Or, oh, Einstein, okay. sorry. Yeah. That's sorry. Okay. I was raised by a German father who was also a theoretical nuclear physicist. So both okay. my parents fled from Germany because they were Jews. And um, so we had a lot of German in our home, and Einstein wow. is the correct way to say it. Oh, I never even knew that. Okay. <laughs> so are you a cat person or a dog person? So I love all animals, pretty much, including anaconda in the jungle. But I'd have to say I'm a dog person, mostly because my youngest daughter is allergic to cats. So I absolutely adore my dogs. And I take them on walks every day, and I talk to them. And they, they're really understanding of me. Yeah, I'm pretty allergic to cats, too. So I'm probably a dog person, too. Yeah. All right, that's it. Thanks. All right, Back to you, Tom. You. Our buddy here has a nice little segment of his own. Let's drum up some support for the percussion class. Hey, Nolan, did you hear about the drummer that finished high school? No. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nolan Murphy here with Kale Young to talk about percussion. So what would you say you do in percussion? Well, we have fun and learn new things from our teacher, Miss Bilodeau. Uh, at the same time, we have great jam sessions where we rock out using different types of percussion instruments um, and have a bunch of fun. So do you use a lot of different percussion from different cultures? Yes, we use a wide variety of drums and percussion instruments wide, uh, ranging from Middle Eastern Asian countries uh, to African and even Cuban drumming. What would you say your uh, favorite culture of drums or your favorite drum is? So far, Middle Eastern, because it has the djembe, which is my favorite drum, has a really unique sound and is really cool looking. Would you say this is a very informative class? Yes, definitely. We uh, learn a lot about different music and a lot of different things such as note names and how to read music. OK. Well, there you have it, percussion. Back to you in the studio. And that sounds like a great class. Can't wait to see what we get next week. Now, we have a fantastic interview done by yours truly. So what was the subject of your last interview? No one. I honestly have no idea. Let's find out. So Mr. Lack, what was your inspiration for making your, your piece, The Recycled Globe? It was a cautionary tale for my students. Uh, it demonstrates how students waste a lot of paint during class time. Uh, they'll pour paint into a cup. Uh, they won't use all the paint. It, it'll dry. So we have tons of cups near the sink, and I uh, pulled out all its, its acrylic paint. Uh, so when it dries, it dries like plastic. So uh, we pulled out all of the paint from these cups, and I had an old globe, and I attached the uh, paint pieces to the globe, um, so it demonstrates the, you know, the wastefulness uh, that we have on the planet. Uh, it's, and it also acts as an art piece and um, as something I can demonstrate to the students, you know, the amount of paint that they waste uh, or can waste without 
if, if they're not careful with their materials. Interesting. So has this piece influenced any of your students to start using uh, stuff around the room that may look like trash for art? Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, for when we do mixed media pieces or collages or things like that, um, students are more apt to to be more inventive, uh, and you know uh, they start collecting things that they might ordinarily throw away, but uh, could use in a in a future artwork. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you. You're welcome. That was a cool interview, Ryan. What do we have up next? Well, I think we have an interview of a former student, Zach Hamilton, who is applying for his pilot's license. Let's see how that interview turned mm. out. Hello, I'm Janine Holder here with future pilot Zach Hamilton. How are you today? I'm great, thanks. That's good. Have you always had an interest in flying planes? Oh, yes, definitely. I've just loved flying. I flew a lot when I was younger, so I just loved it from a very early age. Okay, and has your family had a big influence on you? Oh, definitely. Just my uncle, he has his pilot's license, actually, and he uh, he uh, lives up in Burlington. He has his own plane. He just flies all the time. Oh, okay. And um, how exactly do you obtain your license? Well, you just, a local municipal airport, you just say they have, mostly of them have flight schools there anyway. And uh, you just go there, do an introductory flight lesson, and just set you up. It's great. So if you just go to the airport and say you just want to learn how to fly, then you can just go there and they'll set you right up? Yeah, it's basically how it works. It's really simple. I mean, when I first started, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but very easy. All right. And what are the prerequisites for getting your license? Uh, you have to have 35 hours on the ground of like classroom time, then 30 hours in the air of actual flying. Okay. And do you have to take a test in order to obtain the license? Uh, I think so. I think at the end of the all the training, all the hours which take a long time, but you have to take a test at the end, I think. Oh, uh, okay. And do you plan to have a career in flying planes? Uh, definitely. I hope so. I'm going to join the uh, Australian Air Force after uh, college, possibly, and uh, be a pilot with them. Oh, wow. And do you plan to um, travel different places once you do have your license? Uh, I hope so. Hopefully I'll have my own plane and uh, just do a lot of flying. All right. Well, good luck with getting your license. Thank you. So next up, we have Monica Valley interviewing Abby Fowler about the WHHB 99.9 .9 Radio Club. Do you listen to the radio station? Not recently. My, uh, my radio in my car is broken, so all it plays is Barney CDs. Okay, let's play the clip. Hi, I'm Monica Valley, and I'm here today with Abby Fowler. And I'm in the WHHB Studios radio room. So, Abby, can you tell me a little bit about this club? Sure. Well, this club is a large group of students that kind of come together and break into smaller groups where we can put on our own radio shows. That means we get two hour blocks once a week, and we have full liberties to have whatever kind of music we want on the air and talk about what we want. Sounds like fun. So what are some responsibilities that you have as a uh, co-host? Some of the responsibilities we have is to manage the equipment, understand what we should and shouldn't be playing on air as far as swears or other items like that, and really to understand how being on air works. And you have to fill out a log for uh, the F a FCC? Yes, we do. We have to fill out a log saying, what songs we played at what times, showing PSAs, and when we introduce and sign off. Sounds nice. So uh, what kind of music do you like to play on air? Um, I really like to play a very broad range of music on air. I go from oldies, throwback songs, to new popular songs like Taylor Swift, and everything in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so uh, what's the basic description of your radio show? The basic description of my radio show is Monty and I, we come in here, we sit down, we pull up really whatever kind of music we're in the mood for listening to, and we throw in some music news, some current events, and banter back and forth for a little while and listen to good music. That's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> um, so if you had to listen to one artist for the rest of your life, what artist would it be and why? One artist for the rest of my life. I would probably have to say One Republic. I love One Republic, and I find all of their songs I could listen to at any time of the day and love. <laughs> um, so why did you join Radio Club? I joined Radio Club for another way to be able to express myself without people sitting next to me and going, what are you doing? It's a fun way that we can come in here, be ourselves, and not feel judged. That's a really good answer. Um, so 
What do you like best about this club? I love the fact that we can come in here, be completely ourselves. We may not have a ton of listeners, but for us, we have listeners because we're on air. Uh, so how does an HHS student get involved in the radio club? It's really easy to get involved in radio. All you have to do is go see Mr. Bailey upstairs in the English wing, and he is happy to have you come mentor, not mentor, but come and in, intern and watch some of our shows so that you know what's going on, and you can have your own show within a couple weeks. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Abby. Back to you in the studio. We're back, but only to say thanks for joining us. I'm Nolan Murphy. And I'm Ryan Lynch. This has been 429. Goodbye, Holliston. Stay classy.